everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about graphing quadratic inequalities, not solving graphing. This is really key. Uh, solving a quadratic inequality is when you get something like x squared minus 3x plus 2 is greater than 0. This is the key over here, 0. If it is one variable, just an x, and it's being said greater than, less than a number, usually 0, that is solving a quadratic inequality, not graphing. Graphing, the one we're doing today, is when it is greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to y. When you have an x and a y in this equation. So if you're looking for solving quadratic inequalities, that is a different video. Link is in the description below. This is graphing. Okay, so to graph a quadratic inequality, we need a graph, right? There you go. And I actually planned ahead and made a graph. Hmm, pat myself on the back for that one. So you don't have to endure me awkwardly drawing a graph in front of you. Aren't you happy? Now we have to go through the main two phases of how we're going to solve these problems. They are graph the parabola, which is what a quadratic makes. It makes a parabola. In this instance, it's going to be either opening up or down. And then we're going to shade. Either we're either going to shade everywhere outside the parabola or everywhere inside the parabola. Seems simple enough, right? Well, if you remember how to graph a parabola, it's probably been a while now in algebra, then you are going to be one step ahead of this game. If you don't, and that's pretty common because a lot of times, you know, we learn things for tests and then we don't use them for a while and they can get a little bit rusty. So I'm going to go through both of this. I'm going to go through the process of graphing a parabola, which is a nice reminder. And then we're going to talk about the shading. So if you don't need the graphing the parabola part and you just need to know how to make sure it's a solid or dotted line and then shade it, I'll put a link down below where you can jump forward to that point in the video. But for everyone else who wants to remember how to graph the parabola, this is where you're going to start. Okay, so we are going to be graphing x squared minus 6x plus 12 is greater than y. That's where we're starting. Now, to graph this parabola, we're going to start by doing the same things we would do if this was equal to y. Same basic process. Now, some references I've seen will tell you to start with finding the zeros of this. Zeros are where a parabola crosses the x-axis. I'm not a huge fan of starting with this because there are parabolas that don't cross the x-axis. So if you spend a lot of time trying to find the zeros and it's one of these, you've wasted your time. Now, if your teacher specifically tells you start by trying to find the zeros, please follow their lead. We don't want you to lose points over this. But if you are given the choice as to how to solve this, I would recommend do not start that way. I would start with finding the axis of symmetry, which will lead you to the vertex. Vertex being the either the maximum or the minimum point of a parabola. So the axis of symmetry, the formula is x equals negative b over 2a. Again, the axis of symmetry is if you have a parabola, it's that straight line that goes up and down and splits the parabola perfectly in two, makes it into two symmetrical, hey, axis of symmetry, two symmetrical parts. And it's always x equals a number. That's what we're looking for. Now the b and a, hoping that looks a little familiar, but if it doesn't, here's just a quick reminder. When you have a quadratic, you have an x squared, you always have an x squared, you sometimes have a plain x, and you sometimes have a plain number. You sometimes have all three, as in this case. If you have all three, a is the number in front of the x squared, b is the number in front of the plain x, and c is the number that's by itself. If there is no number, like in this case, it is an understood imaginary number one. So in this case, our a and our b would be this, our b there is negative six and our a is that imaginary, I should say invisible is a better way of saying it, not imaginary, invisible number one. So I'm gonna plug those two numbers in. 
since our B is negative six, I plug that in for B. And my A is that invisible or understood one. So negative, negative six on top, that becomes positive. So positive six, two times one is two. Six divided by two is three. Now I know my axis of symmetry is X equals three. So that means that there's this line, X equals three, and that somewhere on that is my parabola. And I know it opens up because this is positive. Just a reminder in case that slipped your mind. Okay, so it's a parabola, it opens up and it's somewhere on this axis of symmetry. Its vertex is somewhere on this axis of symmetry. How do I find that vertex? Well, I now know that at the vertex, X is three. So to find the Y, I need to take three and plug it back into this equation. So that's my next step. I'm gonna slide this over. And I'm going to write it out over here. So my next step, I plug three in. So I have three squared minus six times three plus 12. And I need to solve that. Three squared is nine minus six times three is 18 plus 12. Nine minus eight, eight, nine minus 18 is negative nine plus 12 is positive three. So when X is three, Y is three. So my vertex is at three, three. Right, that's my first big piece of information that I need to graph this parabola. The second one I need is a chart with some points, X and Y. Now I already know three, three is a point. Now I'm gonna go two to the left and two to the right. Some teachers may ask you to do three to the left, three to the right, follow their lead. I'm just doing two for our purposes because it will show you the basic form of this parabola. If I plug one into this equation, because that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these numbers and plug them in one at a time into this equation and see what y's, what y values I get. So when I plug one in, one squared minus six times one plus 12, one minus six plus 12, one minus six is negative five, plus 12 is seven. So I'll put a little seven right there. And my other one, let's change the color, just try to make this a little more easy to see. I'm gonna put two, two squared minus six times two plus 12. Four minus 12 plus 12. Well, four minus 12 plus 12 is just four. Now these are symmetrical. Parabolas are symmetrical on either side of the vertex. So I know that this is four and seven on these other two sides, the other two points. I don't need to put four and five in there. If you want to, you can, you will get these same numbers four and seven. So now I have a chart of five points that will give me the basic idea of what this parabola looks like. So I have my vertex at three, three. I have the point at two, four, the point at four, four, the point at one seven and the point at five seven. That gives me a generally pretty good idea of what this parabola is gonna look like. Now, if this had been a normal, I say normal, <laughs> an example of one you'd done before where it was equals Y, you would at this point just draw a nice little solid line and you'd be done. You'd have graphed this parabola. Well, there's one more step to go in the graphing part before we get to the shading. And the graphing part, we need to decide whether this is going to be a solid or dotted line parabola. And the way we determine that is by looking right here at this sign. The rule is if it is greater than or less than, you draw with a dotted line or dashed line. If it is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you draw it with a solid line. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna give you a quick little explanation as to why. So this one over here is a greater than. We just said that is a dashed or dotted line. So I'm gonna to try to do that and I'm not gonna do it very well because it's hard to do this with a stylus on a computer screen. I admit it, I'm not great at it. But you can tell that is a parabola 
with dashes, with breaks in it. It's not solid. Now, the reason we draw this with a dashed or dotted line is because we are trying to represent visually all the coordinates, all the X and Y pairs that make this true. So we want all in the X's where if we plug an X in there, X and Y pairs, where if I plug an X in there, I get a number that is greater than the Y of that pair. Now, if I plugged in any of the points that is actually on this parabola, it would be where X squared minus 6X plus 12 is equal to Y. That's not part of the answer. If I draw this as a solid line, I'm saying the points on this parabola are part of the solution and they are not. That's why if this were an greater than or equal to, we would draw it as a solid line because then the points on the parabola would be a part of the solution. Okay, now here's, we're at the shading part. <laughs> now for the shading, you're going to pick a test point because we want to know all the points that make this original statement true. My favorite test point is zero, zero. You can only use a test point, this is important, if it is not part of the parabola. It has to be somewhere outside or inside, not on it. If zero, zero is outside and not on the parabola, it's great for this because it makes things very, very simple. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit because we got a lot of writing going on here and scoot it up here. And just here at the bottom, I'm going to use my test point zero, zero and plug it into that original equation. So zero squared minus six times zero plus 12. And as you can see, plugging in zero for X just gets rid of those X's. So I am left with 12 since zero minus six times zero, zero plus 12 is 12 is 12 greater than, and I apologize, I did not write zero in for Y, sorry about that, is 12 greater than zero, because I plugged in X and Y of zero, zero. Yes, this is a true statement. 12 is greater than zero. When you plug your test point in and you get a true answer, you shade the area where the test point is. In this case, the test point is outside of this parabola. So you are going to shade everywhere out here that is outside this parabola. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just showing it's the outside portion of the parabola. If I had done this test point and the answer I got at this point were false, then I would have shaded the area here inside the parabola because it's the area, you know, then it would mean the area outside is false because that's where that test point was, that that outside test point area was false. So we need to shade where it would be true. It would be the other part, the part inside the parabola. So for these, again, your steps are going to be first to graph the parabola. You're going to, uh, my recommended way, I should say, to do that is to use the axis of symmetry to find the vertex and then chart a couple of points on either side. Put those points on your graph. Then look at your sign to say what it is, if it is greater than or less than, or greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, to determine whether you need it to be dashed or a solid line. Draw that parabola, then use a test point. I usually pick zero, zero, plug that test point in for X and Y, and see if it is a true statement, shade the area where the test point is. If it is a false statement, shade the area where the test point isn't. And you're done. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.